Hey everyone, I'm Spencer. I'm Laura, and we're married to board games. We don't play a whole lot of war games. One of the reasons is that many can take a long time, especially if you and your opponents get locked into a cold war of sorts. And speaking of Cold War, in this video we are taking a look at Iron Curtain, a two-player area control game from Jolly Roger Games. Now this game says it takes only about 20 minutes to play, so that was a huge selling point for us. But can Iron Curtain fit that Cold War feeling into just 20 minutes of playtime? Well, let's head over to the table to check out the components, then we'll tell you our thoughts. Aside from the rule book, this is everything that you get in Iron Curtain. Now there are nine cards for each player. It doesn't matter what they are, they're all mixed in, so there's not specific cards for each player. There's a starter card, there's a score card, and then you've got cubes for each player. Red is USSR, blue is the United States. The idea is to score points, and you're going to be, as you score points for your country, you're going to be moving this tracker towards your flag. If the score marker ever reaches one side or the other, the game is immediately over and whoever did that wins. Otherwise, you play through two rounds and a final, two final scoring rounds after that, and then if you don't reach one flag or the other, whoever is closer to their flag will win the game. During the first round, each player will take five cards. You're only going to be playing four in each round, but you're going to be setting aside one card for the end of the game. Here's what the cards look like. You've got a continent, basically, and then a country that's part of that continent. You can think of the continent as kind of like a zone. Uh, you've got different flags, either the United States or the USSR. This tells you the amount of influence cubes you can get if you play the card. This number right here tells you how many cards are in that zone. So for example, there is one other card in South America somewhere. Looks like, no, I don't have it. The other player will probably have it. Um, that's important. I'll tell you why here in a second. This number right here tells you a bonus point that you're going to score if you control this zone. Um, so if you control Central America, you'll get two points. If you control Japan, or I'm sorry, not Japan, but if you control Asia, you'll get two points. I'll show you how that scoring works here in a second. Also note that the bottom of the card that there is an event. Um, if you play a card down that has the flag of your country, you have the option to either do the event or gain the influence cubes to be spreading around. You can't do both. If, however, you play a card that's for your opponent, they get to do the event and you still will get to get the cubes, but you don't get to choose. They, they have the option to do the event if you play the card However, you'll still get the cubes. What do you use the cubes for? Well, I'm glad you asked. On your turn, if you play down a card, you have to put it down beside a card of the same zone if it's already down there. So for example, if I play France, I have to play it somewhere beside the Europe starter card that's already there. If I'm playing USSR and I put that down, first of all, I have to ch check and see if the US player wants to do the event. If they don't, I can continue. This cube means I get one influence cube they get to put down, and I have to put it either down on a card that has one of mine already, or adjacent to a card that already has one of mine. So in theory, on this turn, I could put this influence cube there. And the turns will go back and forth. Each player will have a chance to play down a card and make those decisions I already talked about. Once a region gets all of its cards down on the table, that zone, that region, is scored. So for example, Europe has six cards in the zone. So if between me and the other player, we get down all six immediately before any actions take place, a round of scoring happens. First of all, each player who controls each individual card will get a point. So in this case, I'll get a point for controlling France. And then you look at who controls the most cards out of each zone. So in this case, in Europe, even though there are only two cards, you get the idea. I'm using the term controlling, really it's dominating. There's a slight difference between the two, two, what the two terms mean, but essentially whoever has more cubes on that card will get the points. So like I said, for France, I would get a point. And then if I look at this, this zone, I dominate France, so that's one. Nobody dominates that card. So I dominate the majority of cards in the zone, and that's where this bonus comes in. So I'd get the one point for France, 
So if I were here, I'd get the one points for France, and then I'd get the bonus three points for controlling the most in that zone. One, two, three. And that's basically how scoring works. You play through a round by, like I said, playing down four cards. You set aside one card for the end of the game. You play through another round of each player playing down one card until they play down four. And then if the game's still going, if not one person has gone, you reveal the two cards that have been set aside. You look at the difference between the two. So say the other player had set aside this South Africa card. There's a difference of one cube between the two. And you look at the, the country that has the most. So in this case, the United States would have the difference of one, and they would get a point on the score tracker. And then finally, you go and score each zone and the countries um, a according to the order that's on this scorecard. And that's the game in a nutshell. Iron Curtain, brief overview. This game does not come with an actual curtain made of iron. No. There wasn't an actual physical Iron Curtain. You know that, what? right? Just kidding. No, but there was a wall, right? Yes. Is that the Iron Curtain? Anyway, I digress. Whatever. Let's get into this game. <laughs> um, so even though the uh, Iron Curtain is not a actual physical thing, we do mm -hmm. have a physical game to talk about. Right. Um, so there's not a lot to this game, really. Exactly. Cards. And, right. Cubes. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's that little score marker. True. And so, you know, really because of that, this box is a little bit bigger than what you need. Right. Which is fine. I mean, you get the nice display on the shelf and, you know, there's plenty of room in there for things to move around. So if you drop it, nothing's broken. Right. But you could easily take the components out and throw them in a, in a drawstring could, bag. Yeah, you could put them in an even smaller bag and pack them in a suitcase or a purse. And Very portable. Mm -hmm. Very portable game. Um, so the graphic design, I like this cover. I like the colors. Very representative of the two countries. Right. And I like the use of the image of, of the presidents and the political figures. Mm -hmm. I do feel like that on some of the, on the actual cards themselves, like with the pictures of the countries and, and some of the actual graphic design of the game it's kind of eh, there's not much pizzazz to it which i guess is fine because of the style of game it is i really feel like if you did anything else it would be too busy you think so yes um i mean all i can think of with those cards that you could do extra would be flags of those countries mm -hmm. which would be con confusing yeah, with that's true. the u.s and the um, soviet yeah. flag or you could do I mean, I don't know how else you could represent them. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it would just be too busy. The what they did is just right. Well, and, you know, if, if you go for the time period, too, it, it almost looks kind of 80s a little bit on the, on the design. Mm -hmm. As far as, like, if it, this was made in the 80s, it almost looks like what that would look like. So, right. Okay, I'll give you that. Little, well, I get a little red October feel. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right, do you have anything else to say about the physical aspects of the game? Um, I would say... Maybe the card finish. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, they don't seem like the real nice heavy duty cards. Yeah, it's not the and, winning and finish. There isn't so much to this game. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and make those components high quality. I yeah. say, and and let's go for the really the nice cards. Okay, on that. cool. Well, let's talk theme okay. of the Iron Curtain. I'll be honest, war is not really my thing. His, especially historical war. It's like, eh, people fought. Yes, it's important. Or they didn't fight. Well, that's, I was about to say, since there Pardon? wasn't an Obvious, actual war. <laughs> obviously, I don't, I'm not a historical war person. Um, so it's never really been anything that's interest, interested me. Okay. Um, but I think the theme is executed very well in this game. Mm -hmm. it, it fits the mechanics very well. Yes, um... How they found to, to put those two things together, I really enjoy that. Well, you've got the both of the countries. There's a, kind of like a stalemate, so kind of that represents that's represented in that the the score track that's you've got that tug of war, the back and forth between you score, I score, you score, I score. Well, and, and that's the thing that they easily could have done a you get this many points, I get this many points. Right. But instead, they went with that tug of war yeah. element. And I love and, that. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. It wouldn't. It would be a totally different game. Yeah. And I don't know that I would like it as much well, as I like there's it. there's definitely that push and pull. Mm -hmm. you know, as you score, you really have to be paying attention to that because, yeah, if, if I were just trying to play catch up with, like, a, an actual number that you might have, I, I would say, okay, well, I'll just catch up later in the game. But this one, if you get too far down the track, 
you may win and the game will be over. Right. So you have to keep that balance of not letting your opponent run away with it too soon. Right, but you also have to be careful with the cards that you lay down because yeah. um, if you lay down a card that is for your opponent and they get to use an action where they get to move ahead or put more influence cubes out there if the opponent is ahead on the influence track. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a whole, so many yeah. things in here that you have to find yeah. the right balance I, in order I love to that. play them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and speaking of thematic, of course, putting down those influence cubes is thematic with, with the war. You're, you're spreading your influence, your propaganda, if you will, yes. around other countries. Um, and, and, you know, it's obviously you're just putting cubes down on cards. But if you think about it thematically, it works very well. I, and I really like that. Well, and then totaling up in each zone. Yes. Who has the most total influence. Maybe not necessarily for individual countries, mm -hmm. but in that and, and, continent or whatever as a whole. And not every area control game does that. Right. And I love that. The two-fold scoring of this. You got, like you said, the individual score for each individual country, but then the larger score for the zone. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I love that a lot. I also really like the dual use of those cards. Yes. So again, if you play a card that's your country you have the choice to either use it for the influence cubes or the event, which sometimes the event is much more powerful than those influence cubes. Possibly. But based on the shuffle of the cards, your opponent may have your cards that are better suited for you. And so, you know, again, if you play a card that's your opponent's flag, they have the option, the option to do that event. And then I think what really ties that all up is that at the end of the first round you mm -hmm. don't get to play the last card in your right. hand you lay it down for later use right so you have to decide is this event first of all am i going to keep one of my cards or am i going to keep one of their cards mm -hmm. and what are and what do you think they're going to do exactly and then on top of that is this event more important for me to use now or do I need to save this for later with mm -hmm. all the cubes that it's got on it? Exactly. When you hit on something really good, too, that I wouldn't think of it, that would be present in this game, but it did present itself as we played, is that there's an element of kind of deduction of what your opponent's going to play down. Mm -hmm. You're deducing, okay, I have these cards in this zone, so they should have maybe at least one or two from this zone. Again, that's informing your decisions of when to lay down these specific cards. Right, like there were times I was sitting there waiting for him to play yes. down Iran and so that I could ha use my action in Iran, and he didn't well, put it down. Again, it fits this Cold War feeling of, I know you have it and I have it. I'm not going to play it down because I'm waiting on you to play it down, but uh -huh. you're waiting on me to play it down. Yeah. It's it's very fun, and I it's love that. It's a game that. of chicken, kind of. It, it, it really is. <laughs> so there's we've talked about there's so many strategic decisions to be made um, with this basic, what, I think 18 cards in this game, right, and that's yeah. it. But there's a lot of strategic decisions to be made. Um, it's only two-player. But I think this is a perfect two-player game. With this theme, I mean, it, it has to be that way, well, I think. Well, and, you know, I really like... We've, we've, we've reviewed Viral, and I really like that. But it doesn't do a two-player area control well. You have to play with a third dummy player. This is an excellent two-player area control that does it in a very short amount of time. Yes, streamlined. Um, and it's it's extremely streamlined. It's It's smooth. Um, I mean, you can play this game in less than 30 minutes and have a blast with it. Even less than that, depending on how good your opponent is or how <laughs> bad you are, really. Um, True, because game ends as soon as a cube exactly. lands on a flag exactly. at either end of that track. Yeah. So basically, you can tell from what we're saying that Iron Curtain is mechanically simple, but offers many strategic decisions, making it a well-rounded two-player area control game. So the answer to the question posed at the beginning of this review is a resounding yes. Iron Curtain fits that Cold War feeling into a 20-minute game. The tug-of-war aspect is very thematic, and it's really neat to think of spreading your country's influence around the globe. Now, aside from the theme, Iron Curtain is just an all-around fantastic area control area influence game. It's a pretty basic execution of the mechanism, but it feels elegant at the same time. It's also an excellent two-player game and perfect for couples. The game is slightly lacking in the graphic design department, but not enough to really bring down our rating of the game. And so, having said all of that, we give Iron Curtain a rating of 9 and a seal of excellence. 
check this one out for a super fun experience that is also super portable. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to our podcast on your super portable phone, and you can listen to us talk about other games along with tasty game night grub recipes. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.